this heinous crime in its entirety. Please proceed, but start from the beginning. The most wild narrative I am about to tell. I neither expect nor solicit belief. For tomorrow, I die. And today, I wish merely to unburden my soul. My immediate purpose is to lay before the world a series of mere household events. Events that have terrified me and destroyed me. Please go on. I was young when I married. My wife saw my love of domesticated pets, and she lost no opportunity at procuring as many as she possibly could. We have birds, a goldfish, a vine dog, rabbits, a small monkey, <laughs> and a cat. <laughs> now this cat was an enormous animal. A, a beautiful cat, entirely jet black. I named her Pluto, and she was the pet that I liked best. Now my wife was a bit superstitious, and she used to joke that the cat could be a witch in disguise. So I alone fed it. It used to follow me all through the house, even into the streets. Our relationship continued in this blissful manner for several years, and then I began to change. I grew day by day, more moodier, more irritable, more regardless of the feelings of others. I didn't wish to harm anyone, but the disease grew stronger and took hold. I drank more and more, much more than I should. <laughs> one day, I came home much intoxicated to see that the cat was ignoring my presence. This angered me greatly, so I seized it. In afraid by the in fright of my violence, it inflicted a slight wound upon my hand, a nip. The fury of a demon possessed me. I knew myself no longer, so I reached into my coat pocket, a small pocket knife, opened it, grasped the poor beast by the throat, and then began to gouge one of the eyes from the socket. I shudder even as I tell the story. Huh? <laughs> well, what transpires once you go to the The cat slowly recovered, no longer appearing to be in any pain, continued about the house. Well, as to be expected, it fled in any sight of me. This angered me greatly. So I slipped a noose about its neck and I hung it from the limb of a tree. I knew that it had loved me, that it made no offense. But it had to be done. Even if it placed my soul beyond the reach of even the most merciful God. That night, I was awoken by my sleep by the sounds of fire. The flames rushed up the curtains of my home. 
with no small amount of difficulty, my wife and I escaped our home. Then the thought seized me. Could this be the work of the cat in some mysterious way? Could it have ignited the place to repay me for my deed? For months, I could not escape this thought. Then one night, I sat half drunk, as usual, in my local tavern, when my eyes were distracted to the corner of the room. A cat, exactly like Pluto, except for one small mark on this otherwise black cat. I reached out to pet it. It arched its back against the back of my head. Seeing as it took a liking to me, I offered to buy it off of the innkeeper, but he, he claimed to have never seen it before. I left and it followed me, so I let it. I allowed it into our home and it domesticated itself at once and became a great favorite of my wife. <laughs> <laughs> this angered, angered me greatly. Yeah. It was the exact opposite of my intention. My hatred grew as probably more so in the morning as I noticed that it, just like Pluto, it also was missing one of its eyes. Hmm. Evil thoughts became the sole thoughts in my head. The moodiness of my usual temper increased. What a hatred of all things and of all mankind. Please continue. What did you do as your rage grew? One night, my wife invited me into the cellar of what remained of our home. As I walked down the steep steps, the wife, the, the cat, came at my heels, nearly throwing me head first down the <laughs> this spiral of me. At this, I snapped. I whacked an old axe off the wall, and I swung in my wrath, in which I aimed to blow at the animal. If not for the quick hand of my wife, I would have landed a fatal blow on that cat. Enraged at the interference, I removed the axe from her hands, and then I buried the axe in her brain. This cruel deed accomplished, I then devised by which I may begin with the disposal of the body. I could not remove it from the home without being seen. So I then devised whether or not to mutilate the corpse or destroy it by fire. I then decided to wall it up in the cellar, as the Middle Ages monks would have done. Days passed, and the cat never returned. Although I did not search. Neighbors came by and asked what happened with my dear wife, and I answered them with ease. She was just away. <laughs> Several officers of the police came, sure that they would find nothing. I offered them to search the house, and they did, bit by bit. They were satisfied and began to leave, and then I was compelled, then, by some unknown force, to tell them that all was well. Nothing is suspicious here. <laughs> <laughs> the walls of this building, I said, are very strongly built. This is a fine old house. My final word 
My stick struck the very brick behind which was my wife's body. The reverberations of my blow sunk into silence, then no sooner than they were answered by something within the tomb. A cry! At first muffled, and then growing louder, almost like a wailing. A screaming now, like the voices of the dead crying out in pure agony! Ah! For one short moment, the officers looked at each other. Then they began to pick at the bricks. They found the body of my wife. There, stained black with blood, smelling of death and decay. It's one eye open, filled with fire. Its mouth wide open, the color of blood. That, that hideous beast of a cat! That damned cat! It had been the one crying out its revenge. The cat whose act had seduced me into murder and whose cruel voice sentenced me to death. I had walled the monster up within the tomb. 